let's move on to the context object web pattern context object in general decouples software components from protocol specific implementations sounds complex actually it's very very simple for example we use http requests in web applications we use servlet api to access the content of the request however if your controllers are tied to the servlet api so if i have a controller which is using the servlet api then i cannot use this controller to handle a mobile request because in a mobile application let's say it's coming from android it would not create a http request it would have some other format and if you have a tight coupling between your controllers and the actual underlying protocol like http or http servlet request then it would prevent the reuse of the controllers for the other things so a context object avoids tight coupling between presentation tier and the servlet api the advantage of the context object is that it allows the controller to handle other kind of requests we are not really tied to the http request so i can have even mobile requests and all other kinds of requests handled by this particular controller let's look at the examples from spring mvc again if you look at this particular to do method it handles the post request of add to do that basically is the request to store the to do to save the to do to the service so or to the database if you look at it when a user clicks submit on the browser it creates a http request and the http request is what is sent out and it is also what comes down to the dispatcher servlet but what the dispatcher servlet does is it converts the whole thing and it makes sure that the binding is done to a to do object so whatever is in the request the dispatcher servlet makes sure that it's bound to the to do servlet so i mean to the to do modal object so if you look at this to do modal object it is like a normal java bean it does not have anything related to http servlet at all and also if you look at this particular controller and also if you look at this specific controller it does not have any binding to the request directly so we are not using anything specific to the http so we can as well use this to handle requests from any other thing maybe from an android application maybe from an iphone application as well all that we would need is something in between very similar to the dispatcher servlet which would take the values from that particular request type and bind it to to do and from then on we would handle whatever is in here so that's basically the thing about a context object the context object here we are using is the to do the other thing we also do is in spring mvc application we do not put things into request or session directly what we would do is we would put it into a modal and thereby we are not again tied to the request so we are not using request or we are not using this session to put our values into directly i mean eventually this might end up in a request or a session but we don't directly interact with them so this way the spring mvc framework helps us separate ourselves from the underlying technology which is http request http response in the controller we don't really see http request and response at all basically the context object pattern avoids tight coupling between presentation and the servlet api so the controller does not use anything from the servlet api thereby you can use the controller for different technologies the best example is the spring mvc implementation of controllers we make use of command objects i mean to bind the forms we use modal to communicate between the controllers and the views and we do not use request or session directly to put some values in there that's the context object pattern the context objects that we were talking about are really the command object and the map or the modal map thanks for joining more than a million students who are learning from us at in 28 minutes we defined a learning road map for java and front end developers we created more than 25 courses covering all the topics that you are seeing on the screen there are four things you can do 
to make best use of these courses. Number one is Udemy. You will find a link in the description of the video to our Udemy profile. We are teaching a lot of courses on Udemy and most of them are free. Number two, visit our website www.in28minutes.com. You would find tons of information including how you can register for our trainings and the link to Udemy and our GitHub code as well. Number three, visit our GitHub repository. With more than 20 repositories covering varied examples, it's a comprehensive source of information and code. Last but not the least, you'll find a set of discount codes for all our Udemy courses in the description as well. Feel free to use them. Good luck from the team here at In28Minutes, your destination for high quality step-by-step -step courses.